Okay, mic check, one, two, one, two, mic check, one, two, one, two. I would like to welcome you all to another wonderful edition of The Pull Up. And this one, I have to say, I've been looking forward to. I'm here with none other than Rick Ross. How are you doing, sir? Still hustling, baby. My, and my man, I'm, I'm glad to have you here. Thank you for coming. Well, you know, we switched up the here. backdrop, tried to get it sexy-like. It's real fly. Thank you. You know, you bosky out shit. Now, I got, I got to say, you being on time fucked me up. <laughs> Did I? It fucked me up that you was on time. Out of all the interviews I've done, nobody's on time. And then I was like, all right, this matches with his music. Because to me, when somebody's on time, it speaks to their, their level of hustle. It speaks to their business acumen. It speaks to so many different things. So thank you, number one. And let's start with business acumen. That's what I'm talking about. Have you, have you found that anything you've learned in the music industry um, has been transferable or helpful in this industry? I usually could find a way to apply something. You know what I mean? If it's something that's positive, I try to take something from it. And um, as far as the author aspect and actually putting the memoir together, it was more about patience. It was more about patience. Because once again, that's all about detail. You know what I'm saying? Me and the homie Neil really sat down. Shit took us damn near two years. You know what I'm saying? That's what I hear about writing, because I want to do this at some point too, but I hear it's such a tedious process. If you want to make this shit special, it take a little time. Because, you know, them motherfuckers got a life they got to go to, follow you around two weeks, go back, do their thing, put it all together, come back. So, you know, and I wasn't rushing it. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing to rush. So but it was that's, all good. But that's the other thing. And when I started that process, they said it was tedious and they said it was really important to get with a nigga that, that was going to get you. Like... Like, if I'm not writing it myself, then I gotta get with a nigga that's gonna be able to. And I was like, damn, well, that sound difficult. Like, I'm gonna find somebody that's gonna pin it the way I want them to pin it. What was the process like in getting with Neil? Well, it was really just when I considered who I wanted to write it, because first and foremost, I knew if I'm gonna do a memoir, I'm gonna most definitely approach it as a film. So if the discussion or when the discussion of us turning this into a film comes up, here's the screenplay, here's the script. It's ready to go, you know what I'm saying? And I'm the type of motherfucker, if I was, after putting releasing this memoir, if I was to turn this into a film, I would sit everybody at the table that I discussed, and we'll chop this up and we'll all eat this together. The same niggas I talked about in the memoir, I b helped bring home, because it mm -hmm. take money and it take real money. If you were to do something like that, would you sell it? Would, would you try to uh, sell it to a big production house or would you try to do that independently or fund it yourself? Netflix, whatever. Well, it depends on, you know, the dollar amount we discuss. Do they see the vision and do they see the value? You know what I'm saying? Because the last film I, I feel that was in this vein was, let's say, N.W.A. Yeah. Right? Shout out to my partner, F. Gary Gray, and of course the NWA story was iconic, legendary. And that was, you know, possibly big as it get. That shit gross what? Over 200 million? Yes, sir. Right. You better so believe now it. we gotta do that for Miami. We've all heard Pablo Escobar say it out of his own mouth. 85% of his his work came straight to Miami. Now it's time to tell the story of those true hustlers that made that happen. Do you think that has yet to be properly told? Of course not. Of course not. No, not from the way you would see it. Nah, most definitely. You know, and I'm talking about the inner workings and really bringing the hustlers, and if they dead and gone, bring they, they loved ones and the closest ones to them to chop that story up and present it in a way where, of course, you know, niggas won't go to prison, but we got to give them the game from the Miami perspective because there's so many real niggas that serve in time and haven't been able to tell their story, which they want to do. 100%. What, what would you like somebody to come away with reading this book that knows absolutely nothing about Rick Ross? Really, really, I really didn't have a priority. It really wasn't a focus because that's the one thing about Neil. 
as we discussed things over a two year span, I never went back and asked him, yo, what was the dopest part? What mm. part blowed you away? What was this? You know, once again, I just let his actions speak. Okay, you put your work in. I took him to Carol City. I took him to, I pulled him up in the hood, dropped the window. That motherfucker looked back like, you know what I'm saying? And I understood he got to see what was really going on, you know? And, you know, I let him tell it from his perspective. But other than the fact that this is something that another young motherfucker from where I'm from and where you from can now add to their bucket list, yeah, you could be an author. You should be an author. You should be a, a film writer. You should be a director. You know, that's some shit we should have in the schools right now. I'm glad, I'm glad that you said that. A, f a few years ago, I was talking to my business accountant, and I didn't have very much money in there, but, 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 but he was riding with me, he was loyal. And he said, yeah, you need X amount of revenue streams to become a millionaire. And at the time, I was stuck in the rap box. And the way contracts were set up, I'm like, damn, boy, is it designed for us to not, is it designed for us to not wear but so many hats at once to not, to not get there? So today to see niggas like you do this, uh, Nikki with uh, Queen Radio, even me in, in podcasting, to just know you can do so many different things now, but that's back to business acumen. How many different revenue streams do you have? <laughs> Because this is a nice one to have. I'm seeing pictures of you and Charlemagne smiling and, and hugging. Right, right. You niggas is authors. That's the first right. thing I said when I seen right. it. Right. These is two black authors. Right. And I'm going to be honest. I haven't, I haven't countered them recently. And I'm not saying that in a, a sarcastic way, but right now we closing deals and we making shit happen. Shout out to Optimo Cigars. And, you know, every, you know, if it's something that naturally goes along with what I do, I'm with it. If it's some shit that I'm really uncomfortable with, no amount, no amount of you money really gonna much. make me, nah. So if it's some cool shit, if it's some sneakers, shout out to Wear Wade, shout out to D Wade, if it's what we drinking on, official Bel Air, if it's, uh, you know, Bumble Rum, or whatever it is, if it's something that go with how we rock, I'm with it. How did you feel? I won't. I won't say this, the sneaker company, but didn't you have a deal that that was sabotaged at some point by some some rap lyrics? I won't get into the company, but right. I thought they would come back. <laughs> you, you know what? And and we did have a, a discussion before. It's a picture with you know the homie that was representing them. We actually took online maybe two months ago because you know we had that discussion. But you know I didn't feel it was time for that. You know I did that. That was cool. You know, we went our separate ways, but of course, uh, once again, once the smoke cleared and, um, you know, the opportunity was put back on the table, I just thought it wasn't really the right time for that. Let's do some other shit. Shout out to D-Wade, you know what I'm saying? We just sat down and came up with some real dope shit we gonna launch real soon, and it's something I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. A whole new market, shout out to China, just leaning in his whole, his whole movement is really huge a lot of people don't know that but it's big and i'm happy to be a part of that so that's another new business venture this is a first your your touring coming up right and before we came on i was telling you between album coming straight into the book i've been seeing you on all of this press you got to get tired of it no it's, it does it become annoying no nah. never no nah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest it's either you fuck with who you sitting down with or you don't. You know what I'm saying? Because when you sitting down and you discussing building your brands, this is most definitely just as much a part of it as when you sitting down and you writing your music mm -hmm. or when you sitting down in the office executing a play like, yo, we finna launch these chief sticks or, yo, I wanna uh, sit down and do a partnership with cookies and, yo, I smoked that Gary Payton. That shit was legendary. Shout out to Burner. Whatever it is, this is, just as important as everything else is you gotta put it on the street. You gotta bring awareness. Do you think that mentality is lost today? Or that 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 different type, that different style work ethic? Well, is the mentality lost? I can't say that. Is the level of dedication something we see every day? No. Yeah, no. okay. You know? Because with the platforms that the youngsters got now, they could be launching a new business every week. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but do you think... I agree with that. Right. Especially with the information they have, the resources, the tools they have. Right. Do you think they give a fuck enough about it? <laughs> like, every other word that come out your mouth is a business venture. Right. Every other bar, damn near. Right, right, right. But, but you know what I try to do? I try to understand their point of view. Their advances are much bigger now mm -hmm. than when we first came in the game. So now you gotta also the show money take is that, bigger. You gotta take that into consideration. If you're a young nigga who just made a Lil Nas X hit record that was number one in your fucking bathroom, and you got a label that's ready to give you 25 million up front. If I was oh, the Rose Bank, I may have took that quarter. Yeah. Fuck it, let me take this quarter and we'll consider everything else that next go round. So you gotta look at it from both both ways, and that's how the game moving now. Yeah. So now let's stay with where the game is moving. A lot of niggas are staying on the road to get to their money. And I'll be honest, I've always asked myself, why is Ross not touring? Like, you and Fab may be the only two niggas I've ever asked myself that about. And when I see, I be like, are they purposely staying away from touring at a certain point in their career? Because you've never done this, right? You know, I done visited a lot of different countries but I limit the amount of time I'm really there. I really don't want to go on those 50 dates. That shit, just looking at that calendar to me would be stressful. Yes. I don't want to do we that. We never hear niggas say that. Yo, I don't want to look in and see 50 fucking dates. And I, yo, it's I don't want to do that. It's a lot. That's too much for me off the bat. You know what I'm saying? 15, hey, and that's, that's a quick run for a lot of niggas for me. Yo, squeeze in some relaxed days. Let me eat good over here in Sometimes France. Sometimes that don't work some with the pasta. Route, Let me smoke good over here. Let me, yo, let me go through a little sightseeing over here. And I'm going to stretch those three weeks into a five. And I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't no pressure. And we got us some money. But it wasn't no pressure. And once again, that's important. You know what I'm saying? That along with people don't tend to necessarily take the best care of themselves on the road. And I was most definitely uh, one of those motherfuckers. We all, we yeah. all. We you go all. on the road, all the shit that you need to really help keep you relaxed, a lot of it, you ain't got it there, you, it's different. Certain bitches you wish you had, you know, that you had in rotation every four, uh, five yes. days, you know. It's, it's a lot of different. <laughs> yes, sir. So it's, it's just a lot of different things you got to deal with. And uh, like I say, most definitely it's about us getting to the money and performing for, you know, fans that, that want to see us. But at the same time, you try to keep it comfortable. Listening to you, it seemed like, you're, it seemed like your brain would be the perfect brain to help figure out how how us artists take back control of some of this, all this money being thrown around in the streaming era, like without us artists being properly compensated. Does that, do you ever, you ever sit and think about that at all? You know, I sit down and have, you know, conversations with the team, but you gotta realize, I recognize that I'm a new student to the streaming shit as well. Mm -hmm. The formula and the, the format that I came in on, I mastered that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I knew how to, yo, mm -hmm. this the date we gonna release the record. This gonna be the date. This gonna be the date we do this. This the date we gonna do the in store. This where we gonna do the in store. This because this the type of record that. that's out. We gonna get that type of. Today that changes. That's changed. And guess what? I'm sitting back once again, just watching right. it until I get that motherfucker mastered the way I did again because it's something that you really, really got to spend time with. It's yeah. easy to go sit somewhere and sit down at Tidal, sit down at Spotify, and they can break that shit down for you in 10 minutes. Yes, but that can. ain't what I need to really master the game, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just, you know, this is my first, really my first release um, that's digital. You see? Yeah. You, that we actually focused Oh, yeah, okay, got it, got it. Aspect. 
the physical side on it, I wasn't focused on because I had a record on my album that I wasn't sure the way it was going to go. Which which one? Which was Maybach Music 6. Oh, man, you fucked us up with that right, one, Right, right. So guess what I did? I told the team, let's tap the brakes because, you know, we, haven't, we hadn't decided yeah. what we was going to do with Maybach Music 6. So this was the first project because I've always been a physical type of artist. And if I book was on a tour, I wasn't a pre-ticket sale artist. My niggas going to walk up the night <laughs> of and that bitch going to sell out. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of understood the way, you know, my strong points. And so uh, this is the first one we actually focused on the digital side. Have they ever tried to hold that against you, the, the, uh, the lack of hard tickets? Not really, because it's like if you want to be in business with Rosé, that's how it's going to go. You know what I'm saying? Basically. Once we sign the paperwork and we move forward, it's your job to promote it. But the way I am and the type of fans I draw to the table, they not really going to pull out their Air Max and order no, you know, four tickets two months in yeah. advance because no, Rosé coming. It. No, it don't go like that for the majority of my fans. You know and, 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 and saying that, that is so... That's so understandable to niggas that come from a certain place. But is it ever difficult trying to explain that to suits? Well, you know. And what's the difference in suit? Not to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, what is yeah. the difference in suit that you dealt with at Def Jam versus now? Well, you got to understand, you know, when I came into Def Jam, that was L.A. Reid, Jay-Z, Shakir Stewart. Um, Did you come in? My A and R was DJ Khaled. You got a uh, Yvette. You know, um, I had a dream team. You know what I'm saying? All, my my only job was team. to put my records together. Of course. Yeah. It was number one records coming out that motherfucker every two weeks. Yes, sir. That was a different Def Jam, and so of course with L.A. Reid being there, my relationship with the big homie was special. L.A. You know, we was winning. We was winning. So. If I needed something, I didn't even have to call him. I could have sent him a text. And he told me, I got you, baby. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what it was. So when he departed Def Jam, I also followed him over to Epic Records. And so uh, Sylvia Rome was always his right hand. So when he finally left Epic and she took control, I was still comfortable there because I knew she understood my vision. Mm. Damn. That's hard. Yeah. When them niggas left Def Jam, I was wishing I had a clause in my contract that said I could follow. All you had to do was go sit down with them like I did. Well, LA hated me. I had I pulled the A B. <laughs> LA hated me. Y'all he got an affinity for that whole Atlanta area. Y'all just nah, down nah, south. No, nah, no. Nah, nah, if nah. you from down south, LA gonna cut you some check. Nah. Oh, and, J and Jadakus said that sitting nah. in the same I'm chair, a, I'm too. A, I'm gonna keep, keep it real. If you was winning and he seen the vision, he was gonna give you anything you needed. Yeah. Anything yeah, when I met LA, I was on, on my still independent, I wanna get out of this major label shit. And it was, it was it wasn't good. You was bucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You was bucking on him. Yeah, but, but the niggas that fuck with him, they all have that same, that same yeah, yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still feel that way about him. Why? I'm going to ask you this just because we be asking each other this shit. Why did you start your album with the Wale song? That's unlike any way that a Rick Ross project has ever started. Man, and that may be the reason why I started it. But the reason I ultimately chose it is because that was the record Gunplay would listen to a thousand times in a row. And I said, this Port of Miami 2, <laughs> it's 305 in my yayo. And this the record that Gunplay listened to every day, back to back to back. And I said, I'm gonna put this record first. Gunplay went crazy on there. That boy's special. No, I love him. Yeah, he's special. And he back, he back in the studio right now cooking up his, his next project. And I, real, I really feel like for the first time, Gunplay focused and finna do something special for the streets right now. It's for the first time I really feel like he give a fuck. Good, because that part is important. Very. You, you, you gotta care. You gotta Very. put the effort out there. And as artists, niggas get tired sometimes. It's a lot to deal with. Do you ever feel like, well, not ever feel like, because MMG, like, at one point was the pinnacle click. And I feel like all the clicks that are, that are hard, you get that shot at being the pinnacle click. And y'all had that. 
Though it don't feel like that now, it seems like it should. Because you still very much rocking. Meek is bigger than ever, and while they just keep putting out great records. <laughs> huge. <laughs> so it's like... Huge. So I'm like, well, why the fuck they ain't all just screaming MMG and then getting it started again? Is it because y'all are housed differently? Not at all. It may be because that was our priority at the time, establishing a brand. Make sure motherfuckers know we was Broke. here to win and win for the long run. And guess what? We've been doing that. We've been doing that since maybe. That's what I'm saying. It's a long, you, y'all you feel are long me? tenured. Now. And so, and me being Roseus, the only way to really do it is make sure I'm supporting their individual visions as well, which is dream chasers as well as every blue moon. Mm-hmm. You know, we know what MMG at. We know what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, any, and you had any interest in, in add in adding to the collective? Well, guess what? I felt like for the last, you know, after my health scare, and I, I started before my health scare when I went to the hospital. I really felt like, which was something that uh, nobody could tell me, it was something I had to learn. You could sign a motherfucker with as much talent as needed to be the next superstar, but are they gonna work hard enough to become that next motherfucker? And that's something that I really had to experience. So really what I wanted to do was kind of clear house. Mm. That's what I wanted to do, except for you know certain individuals that I felt was really doing what they needed to do. And so, um, when I did get out of the hospital, I didn't want to sign any artists at the time. Because what's going to really impress me? I mean, you got to understand, uh, is this a poet? Like Wale, you, you know, right now, Wale got the fastest growing record on the charts right now. Good. That's the yeah. fastest growing record on the charts right now. Meek Mill has got the biggest presence as damn near any artist in the game. And I just released my 10th top 10 Talk going on it. another tour you know they filmed me coming to america at the state i know you know so, what i'm saying so, we, so I've heard, yeah, yeah 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 i'm the king of the movie <laughs> you know what I'm saying? so it's like this shit just it keep going you know what i'm saying a lot we went in in a lot of different investments a lot of different shit we took our time to also invest not just money but our passion into and we not losing in a lot of areas that is so a fact. it's like i feel like because I see, uh, I see two artists that I really, I'm really looking at like, yo, but I'm not into that competing race to sign a motherfucker game with all these. That ain't what I want to do. Do you see the vision? You know what I'm saying? Do you see Belichick sitting in this motherfucker right here? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Do you see Kraft? Do you see the big boys? And it's, you got to have that vision to be at Maybach Music because Rose ain't racing to sign nobody. Me got a lot of that in him too. Like that ability to just scope the landscape and just pick out talent. You, you, have you ever gotten a comparison to Fat Joe at all? Like in, in regards to your ability to pick out talent, to your ability to pick out a beat, how you, how you go about constructing music? Have you ever heard that? You know what? I, I, I really can't say I heard it, but I, I see it without a doubt. And what I see is Joe just ability to always make dope ass records and he been doing it for what 25 years now? Yeah, he got one now. Right <laughs> now, he got one right now and, and crack still fly with it. And he and he make it feel effortless. Oh, that was my other question. Who yeah. the fuck is your stylist? Shout out to Talia Coles, man. A woman. Of course. I feel like women run this music industry. They glue, they hold oh, this man. shit together, and they just don't get the credit. Oh no, nah, you gotta give them, you got you gotta give it to them. Same way I said Sylvia Rome down to Talia Coles. Down to Yvette, you've named a few. Of course, of shout out to Yvette, Erica, the whole team. My whole it's a lot of females that work around me, and they strong. Yes. You know, and, and that's the thing about it. As a woman, you gotta be strong. And long as you confident and you strong, you, you gonna make it. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're you're out you're out here you're promoting your book you're going on the road while you're while you're out here they're shooting a movie at your house you don't have any sneak details on the movie do you no you just making money while you're not at home yeah we just <laughs> get money I ain't gonna lie we getting some real money I ain't gonna lie so you don't you don't like the you just don't stop the hustle you just nah. don't stop it at all is that out of fear no 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 it's nothing to fear at this point it's nothing to fear. 
I got wings. It's just like I could jump off this building and spread my wings <laughs> and I could just glide. I won't even fall. I could glide. And I mean that in some different ways. So it ain't out of fear. It's really out of love and just knowing the shit we can accomplish. Just understanding that it may have took two years, but the memoir would come to fruition. In the same way I had that vision, I may sit down with, you never know. Yeah. You never know who may film this. Yeah, no, I understand it. You know, I got a Scorsese type of mentality. Well, that's how the music sounds. That's, that's how the music sounds. My good friend Maul has you ranked as like the 13th best rapper of all time, 30, 30 to 40 spots above me. That's, that's what I argue with him about. But 13th, 13th, yeah, of all, of all time. Mm. And what he goes to is your, your discography. Mm. It, it's hard to beat. Like, like we do sliders, you, so. You agree with the 13th? No. No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. But I can't argue with somebody that says that. I, I don't think you can ever argue with somebody else's placement of people. You was arguing my spot close to the one, right? <laughs> no, not close to the one. I don't know who's in my top ten, but I don't know. No, not no. <laughs> I can't put you, you know top what? ten. No, you know what? <laughs> yeah, Yo, you know what's funny about this conversation? You were the exact nigga that I pictured to like, Ross don't give a fuck about none of this top 50 legacy, you who what? does what better. I'm gonna tell you what it is. It is entertaining. That, that, is it that, something that, is that a real nigga, uh, you supposed <laughs> to get emotional about? Not at all. Because what you gotta realize is nine times out of 10, if a motherfucker jump in my Rolls Royce, what I'm playing, they wouldn't even, Dig they, it. they yeah. wouldn't even imagine. Yeah. You know what I mean? If if they jumped in the wraith and Sade, love is stronger than pride Man, came on. Talk about it. Talk about and it. And I exhaled now. some smoke that looked it green. They wouldn't even. <laughs> the stars was glowing in the ceiling. I wouldn't really expect a motherfucker to under, understand everything. So you know when it come to, cause it's a lot of dope motherfuckers. That is true. It's a lot of dope motherfuckers, and so you know, it's a good chance I'm not in my top. I ain't even tripping because I never spent no real time in that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. long as niggas be dope, as long as wh whoever making that list, that motherfucker just need to be certified. Because yes. it's a lot of legends out here. Yes, true, true they, indeed. They came before me, so, you know, it's all love. Do you, and one of the things I go to when, when he says that, I'll be honest, don't attack me, I say, yeah, Ross's discography is one of the best discographies in, in music, period. Better believe but it. But do you think that Ross has shown the ability to be vulnerable in his music? So I want to ask you that. Because I agree with what you just said. If you're not hopping in my Rolls Royce, listening to what I'm listening to, looking at what I'm looking at, how you digest shit might just be a little different. Most definitely. Um, and when, it, when you say vulnerable, because vulnerability for you m might be different than, really? like when Hove talked about losing 92 bricks, somewhere in there was some vulnerability. It was just worded a certain way. <laughs> oh man, and, you know, taking losses, that was all a part of the game. You know what I'm saying? My first albums was based on uh, the prayer and, you know, I ended Port of Miami talking about taking losses. You know what I'm saying? But we can't focus on that too much. It's time to win. We know what the losses was. My homie on the like. front of the medallion knows the losses. Yes. yes. Not really the 92 bricks, because I know homies that done lost that and right back. Lost right back. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure once you work your way up to those type of numbers, if you lost all of those, you done established some type of relationship where you could come back and see somebody and they'll put yeah. you back in power. Maybe not back on that level, on that, but mm -hmm. where you could kind of bounce back. And that's what hustling is about. And that's the yeah. thing I've been the most consistent in since I came in the game. It ain't a lot of niggas that's been hustling like Rose. It's a lot of niggas sold more records, but are they in Rose position? 
that's what, depending on who I'm speaking to, important, especially from my perspective. It's a lot of niggas that sold a lot of singles and got a gazillion streams. Means nothing. But uh, it's your TV hanging on the wall. Without and when I say down. that, I say that in a way of, you know, are you really living? Are you mm. reaping those benefits? Yeah. What's going on inside the house? What's really going on yeah. in the house? And that amongst me and my homies, that's our way of saying, is your TV hanging on the wall? Because you will see a lot of talking and it's a lot of this and that, but, you know, is your mom feeling that love? Mm -hmm. Is that shit trickling down, you know, a few states over? And not saying that's what your obligation is, but you know, those are the questions that Rosea asks herself. Yes. Where's your and so when I think comments? of my top 10, it's a lot of dope rappers. It's a lot of niggas rap fast. A lot of niggas rap slow. It's a lot of niggas that sing and rap. Mm -hmm. And that shit can most definitely be powerful. And I love it. But when it come to being a boss, it's easy. It's easy to say the position I'm in. You know what I'm saying? Do you think, here's a question for you. This might be loaded. Up here in the 90s when Bad Boy was rocking, when Rockefeller was rocking and it was big and it was Hove and pouring champagne and they said that that era was largely responsible for the next generation being so uh, uh, materialistic, right? So now here you come, and on every album, it's been boss talk. But now that I'm like a, somewhat a boss to some people, it's not the most fun thing in the world to be a boss. <laughs> Why but not? It's a lot of responsibility. It's That's a, what it's comes a lot with of, it. It's, it's a lot of... That's the same with the conversation we had before it started. That's just like... The IRS coming with getting money. That come with it. Yeah, but like I told you, a lot of us niggas didn't, we didn't know that the IRS was coming for this money because we never had, we had to learn that in 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 real time. And guess what? Now that you, you, you learned it, you know it, and now it's time to blossom. Go get more money and deal with them off the top. <laughs> take care of them off the top. <laughs> And that's take, the other thing. Everybody, you got to, yes. You got to take cam off the top. And I'm going to be honest, me being a boss, for me, the only way I could be comfortable in playing all these roles and all these, not just being a boss as an artist and in the music industry, but maybe two dozen other ventures we have going on. And I don't feel that stress. I really don't feel that because, once again, if it's something I believe in, that's just like an artist. If I sign you to the label, I believe in you. And I'm rolling. And I'm going to ride for you, whatever we got to do. That's what it is. And so, uh, is it fair for somebody to blame B.I.G. on this generation wanting Rolexes or Land Cruisers or Jay-Z? That wouldn't I be right. So. I wouldn't, I I wouldn't so. blame them for that. Because Eric B. and Rakim made me want to get the, the Dapper Dan shit. Mm -hmm. I just went to the VMAs, one of one by Dapper Dan. Yes, and I wanted that from paid in full. So we could have actually had Eric B. and Rakim, that whole Cool G rap era. Then we could have went another 20 years of vegan rappers. I call them <laughs> vegan rappers. And then we what the fuck is a vegan rapper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we could have went to, you know, <laughs> our, you know, our generation, the niggas shining and stunting once again. So either way, you know what I'm saying? But who is a vegan? Just give me one, who's a vegan rapper? Come on now. What is the description of it? Y'all don't need a name, but what, what, what is that? You, you <laughs> That's been, hilarious. And I got you, a group of niggas you, that I think you would have been borderline vegan. Me? Yeah. No, fuck, I eat fucking you'd steak been, every day. You'd, you'd have been, so what? You could eat pork every day. But why? A vegan, you know, it's a certain, when you talk about big and when I you talk about- I ain't picture, I was in the vegan rapper group. Of course, group. of course. You gotta realize, if, if motherfuckers would say, I'm taking in consideration. You said motherfuckers consider Hov and B.I.G. 
for influencing our generation uh, of niggas flossing, right? I see where you're going. If you're saying B.I.G., who was wearing Versace, the pinky rings and the Rolex, and Hove, the niggas most definitely, music was most definitely the, big, <laughs> had the biggest impact on our generation. But, okay, so if they was the ones that influenced that, you would have to be a vegan rapper. Did yeah, you? you, you Go ahead. With your advance, did you go get the presidential? I went and got some bullshit, yeah. The what? I went and got some bullshit jewelry. You went and got some cool shit? At the time. But did you get the presidential? No. You ain't get the presidential? No. The pinky ring? No. The Jesus piece? Crosses. Crosses? Crosses. Yeah. That's fly. That's fly. But guess what? You was a nigga that was much more recognized for your wordplay yeah. than your sense of style and your flaws. 100%. I still you understand? Ain't yeah. And that's what Big and Hove was the epitome of. Mm -hmm. When I watched the niggas in that black and white video when the, the Versace with the Medusa head mm -hmm. t-shirts for the first time, they filmed that uh, on Ocean, Ocean Drive. I was like, yo, that shit next level. That's when Hove had the you know, the Jesus with the, you know, it went from peace. I'm going back to small details like that. That shit made us, it most definitely made an impact on us. But like I said, even before Eric Ben Rakim would have did that to me, if it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? No, and I so, get it. That's what I mean by that. So you, you understand funny. what vegan, no, totally understand. vegan that rappers is, is. That is hilarious. And you can eat beef, you can eat pork, whatever and be, that and shit you be is. A vegan but rapper. do you eat pig? Yeah. You eat pig? You eat it every day? No. Okay. No. I eat I eat uh I eat a lot of red meat, not not pork every day. I eat a lot of steak. I got a few I habits. I got a few habits that I'm that I'm trying to change going into forty. Like I say all go I say all the time, like like I dropped out of school. Everything I learned is from like niggas like you, niggas like everybody around. All that shit you just said, right? So that don't change really. So you still have to watch the artists that are older than you and watch how they acclimate so going into 40 I, I want to stop I want to stop smoking cigarettes I just do I want to stop eating so much red meat just to health is wealth I'm on it like that so damn I wanted to get back to my discography question but I'll get back to that let's stay with health <laughs> so when you went through what you went through right when Wayne went through what he went through like there's a few people that just gone through some shit it pauses me even Nip, any, anybody you name, we can, I can go off days. It pauses me and it makes me take a step back. I can't imagine the adjustment that comes after st stuff like that. For me, I can't imagine, it would almost give me like PTSD damn near, the afterthoughts of, for me, I hold niggas like you and Wayne that are in the business and had a health scare almost in the same plane as people that have lost like a child. It's like, that, that's how frightening it is to me. Can you speak to it? Well, you know, it's most definitely some real shit, and it's nothing to be played with or taken lightly. And so, um, like I said, I had suffered seizures before, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the ones that would, you know, suffer a seizure and 10 minutes later be back to doing whatever I was doing. I would complete my whole day. But this last one was totally different. Like I said, I woke up two days later, and my room was just full of all my my closest homies, my loved ones, all, you know what I mean? And um, they let me know it was different. You so, didn't have, you didn't wake up with recollection of the two days, you lost the two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, Rose was asleep them two days. And it was just one of those things that, you know, not following and taking your medication the proper way and not trying to rest more, you know, just, that, that, that was the day I decided I was gonna really focus in and make my mind up and, and really do the right thing. And fortunate enough, I haven't had another seizure since. Thank God. You see? But that most definitely can easily be attributed to doing too much shit. A lot of stress on you, you see? But luckily enough, that's why I only take things that I fuck with, I love, you know what I'm saying? But your hustle is so immense. It is. Is that, is that, wouldn't that be like contradictory to whatever you would need to do to chill out? I think my hustle is immense, but I would be contradicting it if, let's say for instance, a year, year and a half ago, 
I had a, a seven-figure offer from a cigarette company. I don't smoke cigarettes. Mm. I don't want us to be holding the pictures, cigarettes. And it's nasty. I left that money on the table, which Rosé don't do a lot of. <laughs> I don't play that game. <laughs> we came for one reason. And so I took a much smaller situation with some cigars and chief sticks, which is an alternative for cigarettes. It's hemp, all natural. You know, so because I am a smoker and I love to smoke, but, you know, I'm just trying to get a grip on it. So the shit that I really rock with is what I allow to come through the door. So you do, so you do already have your foot in that hemp business. Of course you do. Yeah. Because yeah. why wouldn't you? I'm easing in. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you know it's some homies I know that's getting big B's. You know what I'm saying? It's big B's in that, in that market. So uh, I just been watching, studying. I ain't want to move too fast, but it's coming real close. And when it, and when it do, we're going to make the right move. And you still have a checkers. Yeah, 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 without a doubt. You still rocking with checkers, still rocking with Wingstop. The beard oil look, took off. Shout out to everybody that's posted, using the beard oil. Everybody that's, you know, it's really winning in a major way, in a major way. You know, shout out to Black Bottle Boys around the world. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna ask you this question about your discography just because this is another conversation that I have often. Do, do you, are you able to rank your five best albums to you, personally? You know what, the reason I say I can't is because every month it'll change. And that's what happens in these conversations. And, and depending on the way we feel, maybe it, it may be the time of the year, I don't know. But it's just one of those things that, you know, me, Sam, Sneak, we could have those conversations slap, and we could have, you know, solid debates. You know, we playing classic records, we backing shit up, you know what I'm saying? Um, last night, we was riding, ripping through the city, playing all Rosé records. It's, I done collaborated with so many people, man. I, know. It, I, I know. can't even remember the collaborations. I hear them and, yo, who is this? Yeah, but the one thing that probably comes up often, I don't know if you hear it often, but up here, it's been a f after a few projects, niggas say, well, why don't Ross and Nas just go ahead and just do it? Why they don't just do something? Clearly, y'all got some type of chemistry that niggas just hear. Have you ever heard that? I have. Oh, okay. I have. I have. And I would never want to put nothing out there that, that wasn't real. Uh... Me and Nas spoke before. We spoke. I most definitely, you know, we shared some words just talking about on some creative shit. Did we ever say we would do a project or I would pick his beats? No, we didn't. But oh, we no, spoke we on that. some, just on some creative shit. Mm -hmm. I believe I mentioned a, a, a possible title for some form. And, you know, that's one thing about the homie. His level of wisdom is next level. So his level of hearing and listening is... It's most definitely something that's, that's, um, you never know what could happen. How many years is this you've been in? It's been a long time. Long time. So when, when you think back to Rosé coming in, and I won't say coming in as a kid because you wasn't a kid, but coming in uh, wet behind the ears maybe, and you just look back at it, have, have you, is it everything you imagined? Did you get everything that, did you accomplish everything you came here to accomplish? I can't say that yet. Because one, like I say, the game changing every day and every day I see something new, I see something different. Is it something that's really exciting or enticing? Not all the time. But you know, me being around films and watching the film game, that's something that is a good chance I'm gonna put my foot You about in. to get into that, I yeah, can hear it. Yeah, 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 I can feel it. I could feel it. And it ain't no rush, but I could feel it. You know what I'm saying? So when I first came in the game, I just wanted to execute and put out an album. I ain't have no bigger, no bigger ideas than that. I had a big record. You know how a motherfucker do. You same way you had with your first single. Mm -hmm. You have a huge first single. It's very, very little faith in you following that up with a body of work. Yes. It's very yes. few motherfuckers that's really gonna believe in you. And me having every damn hustling, that put me in that category. And I wanted to make sure I, I, I put something together that would not only stand the test of time, but 
you know, put them motherfuckers in check. 100%. Straight up. You put now, you caught, a, they, they, you caught some flack for not reading your book, apparently, but. Did I? Oh, oh I seen niggas saying some shit. But I perfectly understood it. Like, if it's my life, <laughs> I then what it. the fuck I gotta read the book for? <laughs> Want me to proofread it? <laughs> this shit is thick, pause. This is a good book. It shit looks good. You know, the, 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 the responses I'm getting is powerful. And the crowds are powerful. I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm, cause I, I follow you, I'm, I'm watching. I'm like, yo, for Ross to put out a, a, a memoir and start doing these in stores, book in stores, not album in stores. So loud. Everywhere we go, everywhere we've been, Barnes and Nobles, Moms and Pops. The book is... Different demographic coming out? Most definitely. <laughs> most definitely yes. different demographic because it's all it's all something we could gain from. You know, and I'm giving them... The, because a lot of people ask me, Rose, how you do this? How you, how, you, how you put yourself in this position? They say you own 50 franchises. They say you in this business. They, how you do it? It's, it's not one answer that you can just summarize that in. Those, yeah. are, those are thousands of small steps it takes yeah. to get there. And this is the, the only first opportunity I had to actually share that game. Like I tell people, when I go places, I'm only, only there for a half an hour, maybe an hour tops. And we there to talk about uh, me winning or performing hit records, not about that, that level of game. Yes. And so this really the first time they could ever even, you know, see what it's like to wake up with Rose on a, like you say, we started on time. That's how I work over here. That's how I go over here. That's the only way we gonna get, you know, um, everything done that we want to get done. Did y'all do? You did an audio book? As yeah, well? we did. Did you do it? No, Rose ain't have enough time for that. Why you ain't do it? No, nah, it's too much oh, talking. Oh come too on, much Ross. Couldn't do it. Your it's voice it. is never, never. You never. might be top five voice rap nah. voices ever. No. Nah. Nah, he's leaving it on the table. He got to do his own audio book. No, nah, no, nah, we got it. We actually got a, a, a super cool actor to do the audio book. And he did a good job. <laughs> he did. He did. Rose can't do the audio book. That shit take too long. I'm doing? Well, you got more information than me. I'm, I am going to get, I'm going to get on this journey and I'm going to, I'm going to go sponge and get the information like you wouldn't got because I, I would, I would like to, I'm one of the people that say, damn, he, he did that. Damn, Charlemagne did that. Damn, they did that. Like, it's inspiring. It's most definitely it's powerful. It is. And we put a lot into it. It wasn't for the check. It wasn't for the money. Oh, no, we, no. We, we well established that you don't need to do it for the check. No, we don't. Isn't that a good feeling? It's a blessing. When you don't have to do it for a check. It's a blessing. But the only way you, you find yourself in that posi uh, position is it. when you leave very little on the table. They may call you tonight and say, Joe, we need you at this event tomorrow. We got um, 7,500. Last night you may have got 60k, but the night they it's another spot got 7,500. You ain't doing shit. Go get that 7,500. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't typically think that way. No, you gotta go get that. Cause I heard you like to buy your girls a lot of gifts and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I do. You feel me? So I do. You could do that just for her that month, just like, yo. It's true. I, you know, get her the little YSL bag, you know what I'm saying, the hills, blow that 7,500. That was a little 30-minute walkthrough. Yo, and this right here, and I say this all the time, for me is just the biggest, the biggest, the most glaring difference between when I came in and what's happening now is listening to niggas like you talk. It's so many niggas talking with their own outlets. It's just like a bevy of information for niggas to be armed with. So the obstacles are just changed moving forward. It's just, you know, it's one of those situations, man, where I sit back and I try to apply what will last versus what's not gonna last. And you know, Black Bow, Y'all know my black boy, my family, who's actually in the middle of the medallion on the album cover. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually celebrated his birthday. And last night, we all met up at my homie E-Class Club, spot in Miami, Studio 183, just to 
the holes, you know, toast in the air. And while we was holding the toast in the air, I was still thinking business. I'm thinking of black bow, but I'm thinking of business. You know, like, yo, looking around, like, yo, I know how E-Class gonna think, but I'm gonna tell him we need all this door money just for his two daughters and his, you know, but because we gotta find a way to keep this going forever. 100%. And we gotta find a way where we just not yes, necessarily sir. bringing it out of our pocket and not in a selfish way, but setting the business aspect of it up. Because we could throw a party, you know, if something was to happen to Joe, we could throw a party, I could spend a couple dollars, mm -hmm. or I could put the structure together where the family get this shit, and that's how we do it every year. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just what I was sitting there thinking. And I was like, that's something I knew my dog would be proud of. And, you know, that's just what it is. That's hard. I think I, I think that's a good note to end on. Rest in peace to Black Bow. Rest in peace to Black Bow, baby. Yeah, 100%. Listen, Rick Ross, the memoir, is out. Get it. He's going on tour. That means you niggas won't be getting music for a long, long time. He's going. Go get that Port of Miami too, baby. Port of Miami. You gotta go too. get that Port of Miami too. Yeah, wait a second, right oh, wait, 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 wait. Stream it right now. Stream it, buy it, all of that boss. shit. You will be watching this shit and streaming for no reason. But now that you say that, I have I've told because I totally forgot when fucking I'm the guy that did the Nikki interview where she said some shit and she was talking about you, but I didn't think she was talking about you. I thought she was talking about somebody else. <laughs> did you? Yeah. You ain't know she was talking about Rosa? Hell no. Not, that oh, wasn't who she was describing to me at the time. Like, she was talking about you and game. But then she was talking about, it just sounded like she was describing game because I forgot about, I forgot about that shit until you went on the breakfast club and they asked you about that shit. I don't even have a question. I have to answer all that I was shit already. I was totally understanding the shorty. And it ain't no love lost. I don't think it would be. Not at all. I think, and I understood what you were saying up there. Like, I, I get it. It was a it was a tough role to play. She played out, she saw it fit. I get it. I get it. Damn, it was one more. Oh. Any conversation with Burn Band since that track? No. Damn. No. Nah. Right, that's all I got. <laughs> Ross, thank you, man. Much love, baby. The I'm book. To be here. The tour. The album. All of that, get it, cop it. Watch Thanks. this again and stream the album while you watching this. That's if you're on your boss shit. Streaming it for and no And being, being a boss is difficult. I don't give a fuck what Ross said. <laughs> that shit is hard work. <laughs> oh, man, thank you. Man, this is, this is a beautiful setup right here, man. Hey, what building is that right there?